Hey there, class of 2020. I am Ronnie Fields, the president of Guthrie Ministerial Alliance. And on behalf of all of the churches of Guthrie, we want to congratulate you on your graduation. And we are excited for whatever God has in store for you in the next chapter of your life. And we wish you all many blessings on whatever the future holds. So good luck to you, class of 2020. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Chris Legrand. I'm the high school principal at Guthrie High School. And on behalf of the faculty and staff uh, and the administration of Guthrie High School, I'd like to welcome you to the 2020 Guthrie High School Academic Awards Assembly and Scholarship Night. And this is uh, an evening that we look forward to each and every year. Before we begin, I'd like to uh, introduce some important individuals that are here tonight. I know we have one of our school board members, Mr. Travis Salee, is in attendance tonight, and uh, I'd like to recognize him. We also have uh, the administrative uh, team from central office. We have Mr. Doug Ogle. He's, uh, I've seen him tonight. He is our assistant superintendent uh, in charge of secondary education. He's here as well. And of course, we have our superintendent of schools, Dr. Mike Simpson, in attendance as well. And then we have our athletic director, John Chapel, and as well as my two assistants, Brett Stone and Dusty Throckmorton. So um, I'm uh, pleased that they are able to join us this evening as well. First thing I'd like to say is, is uh, students, it's good to see you again. It's some of you I have not seen now for three months and counting. Some of you I have seen since then. But uh, the last time we met, uh, it was the end of spring break, and we just thought that we would see each other in a week. And here we are three months later, and uh, in, in one of the most unusual set of circumstances that I, I know that I've dealt with in my time in 29 years in education. So um, I appreciate everyone uh, abiding by our social distancing guidelines and to ensure the safety and health of everyone. Normally, during these ceremonies, we shake hands, uh, but for obvious reasons, when we present certificates or awards this evening, uh, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to do that, so uh, I'd like everyone to know that in advance, but uh, certainly know that uh, you have our utmost congratulatory remarks, and uh, we certainly appreciate you and your efforts and, and all the hard work that's gone into making this type of ceremony possible. So. Um, I will also like to preface by saying normally we have more presenters uh, that represent the various colleges and universities that come to present these awards, but for obvious reasons and because of the pandemic, they were reluctant and hesitant to send representatives here tonight. And a lot of the universities, the employees have yet to return back to work or in the process of doing so. Uh, and so, unfortunately, they were not able to attend tonight, but uh, we do have a number of our students that are here that are represented that would be getting individualized scholarships from colleges and universities in Oklahoma and the surrounding area. So I'd like to congratulate you guys in advance for that as well. But anyway, um, we uh, are going to take this evening to recognize you and your efforts. And so without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to our mistress of ceremonies, our student council president. Kelsey Rainey. Hi. If I, I'm a little out of practice, so if I mess up, please forgive me. But uh, will everyone rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance. You may be seated. Now I would like to welcome Mr. Legrand back and Dr. Simpson to present the valedictorians. All right, at this time we'd like to recognize our 2020 class valedictorians. And I know that I have been getting calls uh, and emails and texts from parents. When can we get our valedictorian medals? Well, we have them tonight, and so we're going to present them. And so one other thing I'd like to mention is that as we call your name, you'll come up, get your reward, and then just you'll uh, go down and 
quietly return back to your seat. Normally, we kind of stand up here all in one line, but tonight I'll ask that you get your award and then just kindly go back to your seat. All right. So to begin with, we have Connor Blackburn. Shelby Cook. Madison Dean. Mercy Dement. Drew Dodgen. Tanner Dollar. Rachel Erickson. Hudson Harden. Hayden Herzl. Samantha Lancaster. Isabella Lewis. Andrea Martinez. Megan Matthews. Max Mefford. Luke Morgan. Brooke O'Neill. Robert Paddock. Elena Patterson. Riley Pouch. Kelsey Rainey. Amanda Reed. Benjamin Bo Robbins. Patricia Rodriguez. Trevor Salee. Gregory Scroggins. Johnny Scroggins. Kennedy Seifert. Charlie Shelton. (laughs) 
Stephanie Shields. Ellie Throckmorton. <laughs> Stephanie Velasco Nito. <laughs> Jathaniel Wakefield. and Tori Wells. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is your class of 2020 GHS valedictorians. Give them one big round of applause. And one thing I wanted to point out too is that each of these students that are valedictorians all had at least a 4.0 and they have all had a uh, taken a an advanced placement or concurrent class in each of the four s core subject areas that would be math science english and history and so uh, they are to be commended on this high academic achievement and uh, of course they will be recognized at graduation as well Okay, the next thing that I'd like to present uh, are our academic, uh, Oklahoma Academic Scholars. And this is another prestigious award that we like to present to our graduating seniors that have met the following requirements. They have maintained at least a 3.7 or higher GPA. They have achieved an ACT score of 27 or higher. They have completed four units of English, three units of math, three units of science, and three units of social studies. And so at this time, I'd like to recognize the following students for being recognized as Oklahoma Academic Scholars. Shelby Cook. Okay, Shelby, okay, you can go ahead and sit down. Now, let me explain this part too because I was in contact with the Oklahoma State Department of Education just yesterday, and they informed me because of COVID, they didn't send the certificates because they didn't know if anyone would be at the school to receive them, so they mailed them yesterday. We'll be getting them, should be getting them tomorrow, and when you pick up your diplomas, we'll be presenting those to you uh, when you pick up your diplomas after graduation. So you will get those awards, but I would like to have each of these students stand, and then we'll give them one round of applause. So hold your applause till the end. Shelby Cook, Hayden Herzl, Brooke O'Neill, Robert Paddock, Elena Patterson, Kelsey Rainey, Benjamin Bo Robbins, Greg Scroggins, Johnny Scroggins, Stephanie Shields, and Philemon Vasquez Monseca. Ladies and gentlemen, these are our 2020 Oklahoma Academic Scholars. Thank you, and you may be uh, seated. Okay, at this time, um, we have a special presentation. Uh, and here to present the Air Force Academy. Oh, okay, before we get to that, two in a row. All right, the first thing I'd like to do is recognize our academic all-stater. Now, this is another very prestigious honor. Um, here at Guthrie High School, we present this to a, a special plaque that we have made and hung in our cafeteria here at the high school in honor of uh, anyone that is uh, be lucky enough to select it as academic all state. Now let me explain to you how this works. This year in Oklahoma there were 495 people that applied for this honor. In order to even be considered to apply for the honor you have to make at least a 30 on your ACT and there's a couple other requirements as well but th that's the minimum requirement is, is at least a 30 on the ACT and you submit an application there's a panel that goes through the applications and they select the top 100 graduating seniors in the state of Oklahoma. This year, as I said, there were 495 applicants. They accepted 100 
and these represent 75 school districts and 69 schools within those districts. And so uh, very, very competitive. And we have not had one here at Guthrie High School since 2015, so it's been five years. So at this time, I would like to recognize our 2020 Academic All-Stater, Benjamin Bo Robbins. And normally they have a, uh, a big banquet and a reception, uh, and it ha they didn't have it live in person this year, but it was recorded, and that was back in May, right, Bo? And so uh, anyway, that's a, quite a distinction and quite an honor. Okay, next um, we have a special appointment from the Air Force Academy, and uh, this is another thing, if you're not aware, it's a very uh, prestigious honor to be selected uh, into one of the military academies here in the United States, and uh, you have to be nominated by a senator or representative in your state, and it's a, quite an quite a application process. So at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Ed Kennedy for a special presentation. Thank you, Principal Grand. Um, I'm an educator with my day job, so let's talk about that for just a minute. I've got to assume the Scroggins boys are twins, and you guys have had to set apart to keep you from fighting. Pretty sharp on this stuff. My name's Ed Kennedy. Kennedy, I can remember you. I like that name. Good girl. Uh, it's great to be in Guthrie in Oklahoma's first and original capital. Uh, I love the history of Guthrie, and uh, I'm from over in Tahlequah, and uh, talk to Dr. Simpson a little bit as I came in today. I'm a school superintendent uh, at a K-8 school in the Tahlequah area. And interestingly enough, this COVID stuff has, uh, he and I will both be on meetings tomorrow morning on conference calls and then again at 1.30. And uh, I don't know about Dr. Simpson, but as far as, I'm, as, far as I go, uh, before this COVID thing broke out, I had hair. Um, so, you guys are wondering why a, a bald-headed guy with an out-of-regulation uh, facial hair would be here representing the United States Air Force Academy. And this is a, a kind of a secret mission. I'll kind of explain that a little bit. But uh, I'm an admissions liaison officer. I'm in, almost in year number 10 for the academy. I have no military background. Uh, I know there's a Holiday Inn joke in there somewhere with that, but... Uh, I don't have a military background, but I am connected with students. I understand students and connected with the State Department of Education. And there's another little twist to this that I'll add here in just a moment. But uh, the graduation changes and what you guys have had to undergo, uh, I, I feel for you. I feel for the administration and the parents. Uh, you guys are bored. You don't want to hear what I have to say, but your parents do and they've worked very hard to get you to this point. So with that said, uh, bear with me for just a minute while I, I talk about some of those things. Um, you guys have had the graduation changes, and as far as, the, uh, as that goes, uh, Dr. Simpson told me and Bo told me as well about um, the apologies Dr. Simpson had for when the graduation was going to be scheduled. Bo will be gone. Bo will be in... Uh, the middle of pain and misery at that time, I can assure you. Um, but the reason I'm here and the reason I'm doing this tonight, the reason I drove over from Tahlequah is because I find out every cadet has a story. Every kid that goes to the service academies have a story. Uh, my daughter, that's, that's why I got, that's why I decided to do this. Uh, my daughter is a 2012 Academy grad from Little Eufaula and uh, her awards assembly no one knew she'd got an appointment because she didn't have an appointment yet. So two days before her high school graduation, uh, she got her appointment. And I, I find that out at each year. Uh, my boss and I, uh, we host the, we, we live in Broken Arrow, but we host the uh, uh, ultimate Frisbee teams, the men and women on two different 
visits. Uh, we'll have between 20 and 25 cadets in our house, and they play in an ultimate Frisbee tournament in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And, I, and before I feed them the first night, I always ask them, you know, what's your story? Why are you at the academy? What, what challenges have you had? Because I want to know. I want to I hear what they've been through. With that said, I'm going to read a script that we are given, and then I'm going to tell you what is really going to happen with Bo. Um, it's my pleasure today to represent the United States Air Force and to make a presentation of an appointment to the United States Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs, Colorado. This appointment is going to a very deserving young man, is equivalent of a four-year scholarship, full-ride scholarship, at one of the most prestigious universities in the nation. Appointment to the Air Force Academy are extremely competitive. More than 10,000 students apply each year. Now, more than 10,000 apply. There are 30 or 40,000 that start the application process. But their website used to say it takes brain, brawn, guts, and determination, and that's just the application process. So I, I put that out there because there are thousands that go through the, or start the process and don't ever finish it. 10,000 apply, and um, they must not only excel in academics, athletics, leaderships, and service, but they must also, as uh, Principal Legrand said, they must also s secure a nomination from our United States congressmen or United States senators here in Oklahoma. Um, the Air Force Academy accepts only the best of the best. This year of over 10,000 applicants, uh, less than 1,200 were appointed to enter the academy. So you can see how truly outstanding this young man or woman is. Well, this young man is, I guess he's, um, um, the students will join the long blue line and they will become outstanding leaders of character in the world's greatest Air Force. To develop as leaders, cadets take part in a wide variety of programs including flying aircraft, free fall parachuting, competitive athletics, uh, military training and foreign exchange programs around the world. At the same time, they will attend classes ranging from aeronautical and electrical engineering to history, political science, and at the end of the four years, they will have earned a Bachelor of Science in their choice of 27 majors and will be commissioning as second lieutenants in the U.S. Air Force. For graduating cadets, the end of school is only the beginning of their adventure. They will take the skills and knowledge they developed at the Air Force Academy and will serve in one of 38 Air Force career fields for the next five years or longer if they choose. They continue to develop leadership and professional expertise as long as they serve as Air Force officers. Graduates of the Air Force Academy have gone on to become Rhodes Scholars, uh, chairmen of industry, politicians, generals, heroes, athletes, and astronauts. I can't wait to see what great things Bo does. And without further ado, I would like him to come up. Um, I want to mention another item or two. And on behalf of the President of the United States, uh, Bo was hereby appointed a cadet in the United States Air Force Academy for the class of 2024. One of, one of the things or one of the enjoyments I get out of this is when it is done in an auditorium full of the peers uh, or the parents. Uh, those are great. It's great to have uh, have it at graduation ceremony as some schools do. But some of the things you have to understand that go along with this are what Bo will do at the academy and then what he will get to do beyond. First off, mom and dad, if you don't know this, he gets paid about a thousand bucks a month. He should never ask for money. You shouldn't have to send him a plane ticket to come home. None of that stuff. My daughter was on the rodeo team, and the only thing she'd asked for was uh, some money to feed her horse. So um, th that's, that's a really neat deal that a lot of people don't understand about the Air Force Academy. Um, I, I've also got some other ties, and I just want to mention a couple real quick. My stepson is at the Air Force Academy now. He's about to be a senior. My stepson has done things like uh, sit on the border between Palestine and Israel, with an Israeli general. Uh, he did that last summer. This summer he was supposed to work for the Defense Intelligence Agency, which is a version of the CIA in Washington, D.C. COVID kind of sidetracked that. Uh, he also 
was supposed to go this fall for a foreign exchange program in Chile. Um, so they get to do cool stuff as academy cadets. Um, my son-in-law is an academy graduate. He's a C-17 pilot. Uh, you know, my daughter was doing some neat things, and yet when they visited my school, all the kids wanted to talk about was what kind of bombs do you get to drop. Well, he hasn't dropped any bombs, but he has flown into fire uh, over the mountains of Afghanistan. He's also got to serve on a presidential support detail uh, in Africa, such that if things went bad, his plane was the plane that brought the president back. Um, my daughter got, I told Bo this story, she got to spend some time after her sophomore year. They will send these guys on a uh, job shadowing to some Air Force base anywhere in the world, um, maybe as close as Enid or Wichita Falls. It may be as far away as my daughter in Aviano, Italy. She spent the last afternoon, she was in Aviano, Italy in an F-16 over the Adriatic Sea. And uh, that's a young lady who really didn't care about flying, but she did want the chance to go up in an F-16. The uh, Air Force has since sent her back to school uh, for a master's in healthcare administration and an MBA, and she's currently on deployment in the Middle East. The opportunities and the things that uh, Bo will get to do uh, our an appointment to the Air Force Academy is called the Golden Ticket for a reason. Um, he is literally set to do uh, wonderful and great things, and we're all excited, and we'll be interested to see what those are. Now, if you will take this for a second, I came prepared. I will even leave this behind. Take your shot. Your parents may want a photo op, so we will be cleaned and ready to go. <laughs> Thank you guys for your patience. Thank you for supporting Bo on this and uh, if, you've not, if you get the chance, uh, you need to go to the United States Air Force Academy and visit. It is everything great about America. Um, and if you get the chance to go in four years, uh, the Wednesday before Memorial Day, four years from now when Bo walks across that stage, shakes hands with the president, throws his hat in the air, and uh, the Thunderbirds fly over at about 600 miles an hour. Uh, Dr. Simpson and I were talking. He got to see that at the Naval Academy. It's a cool deal. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Mr. Kennedy. Now, Ms. Nancy Powell and Coach Beebe will present the Kale Powell MTXE Memorial Scholarship. Hi, I'm Nancy Powell, and um, I had the pleasure in this life of being Kale's mom. Um, I agree that everyone has a story. I agree with what he was saying. Everyone has a story. And that's um, Kale's story started in 2004 with a broken bone in the homecoming football game. So it sent him from the rock to the children's cancer ward the same night. And the shock that we went through with that, um, the awe of how he handled it is why we do this. Um, he held his head up high and he went on with his treatments and um, made sure everything worked around graduation. He had to do two bone marrow transplants. He had numerous rounds of chemo and radiation, but he walked across that stage. And I'm, I, I hate that you all are not gonna have that, that great experience, but um, our biggest thing with this scholarship, it's, a, it's not an academic scholarship. It is a hardship scholarship, and life is, you know, all about 10% what it hands you and 90% how you handle it, and that is what we look for in our recipients, that they, they um, submit a um, 
an essay explaining to us what their life has been like. And I definitely believe that our two recipients this year are very well deserving of this scholarship. It's a $1,000 scholarship, and I'll let Coach Beebe take it from here. They're on the plaques. I'm sorry, it's loud. Uh, okay, we have two outstanding young recipients of this Scale Palace Scholarship tonight. Uh, Mr. Hudson Harden. And Ms. Shelby Frost. Now, Ms. Chad will present the Oklahoma City Community Foundation Scholarships. Thank you. I'm going to explain just a little bit about the Oklahoma City Community Foundation Scholarships before I present these awards. Um, about 10 or 11 years ago, the Oklahoma City Fu Community Foundation came to the school, and they had so many people in our community giving um, money to the foundation that they said that we want you to be a part of the um, counselors um, group. And what we have to do is I have to attend two meetings a year, uh, one in the fall and one in the spring. And what I get to do then is we get to present three scholarships. Um, the first, for a while, it was only two. And then this past year, uh, we got to add a third, which is really exciting. I'm going to give away two of them. And then uh, we have a family here in town uh, that get, puts money into the foundation, and she's going to present that one. But the first one that I'm going to give is it's the Steve Davis Community Foundation Scholars. And I'm just going to read the little uh, part that they said about Steve Davis. Uh, Steve Davis um, graduated from Oklahoma State University with a bachelor's degree in agricultural economics and accounting before attending the University of Oklahoma of Law where he excelled academically, earning numerous awards, graduating the top of his class in 1983. Mr. Davis is a former chair of the board of directors of the Oklahoma Heart Association affiliation. In addition to his service of chairman of the Oklahoma City Community Foundation Board of Directors, he also served as an executive investment committee to illustrate appreciation for his service. The Oklahoma City Community Foundation established the Stephen C. Davis Community Foundation Scholar Award. And basically... He did so much for the foundation and gave money. They named one of the scholarships that we get to present after Mr. Davis. So if you not see Mr. Davis around town or his family, please thank them. And this year's recipient of Mr. Davis's award is Travis, Trevor Salee. And the next community foundation scholars, and each one of these scholarships are $3,000, one for the, in the fall and in the spring. And they also get to attend in a, um, a banquet that was supposed to be in April, but due to COVID, they didn't. So, and the next one for the Oklahoma City Community Foundation Scholars is Isabella Lewis. Now, Jennifer Briggs will now present the Jennifer um, Lee Briggs Memorial Scholarship. Robin. Robin. I'm not Jennifer, but I am Jennifer's mom. My name is Robin, and I'm so thankful to be here and to see you kids. Uh, some of them, I know your names, I know your faces, only because she talked about you. She talked about you know, her kids, her kids were everything, and she was everything to me. Um, I have so much I want to say about her, but um, the one thing I want to say is thank you. Thank you for each one of you that had her in the classroom. Um, she tried to make it fun. She tried to make your class time fun and exciting. She wanted you to learn. She wanted you to 
enjoy. Um, she wanted to see you grow. And hopefully she did. I feel that this class, you have so much strength. 2014, your world changed just as mine did. Um, you had a teacher that um, wanted to be there, wanted to be with you, and she was she was in heaven. She was her that Guthrie was her school. That's where she wanted to teach. Um, she she just just happy. Um, but anyway, you all have had a very unusual experience with COVID-19, <laughs> uh, but I think that you were prepared just a tiny bit to have an unusual um, ending, if that makes any sense. But anyway, I'm here. Um, I'm the only one that decided to come this evening, and I'm a little nervous up here, as you can't, you know, can tell. I can see Chapel back there looking at me, thinking, "Good God, is she ever going to shut up?" But anyway, um, I just I want to say thank you and congratulations and best wishes to all of you. And right now, I am here to present Megan Matthews with my daughter's <laughs> scholarship. All right, congratulations, Megan. Now, Miss Jamie Newton will present the Kiwanis Scholarships. I'm nervous too, this is my first time to do this, so you did great. <laughs> I'm Jamie Newton, I'm the treasurer of the Guthrie Kiwanis Club. And first I want to say congratulations. You all are awesome. Don't let this COVID thing squash what you feel when you think about walking across the stage, when you think about your accomplishments. You did it, and you did it great. The Kiwanis mission is to improve the world one child and one community at a time. The Guthrie Kiwanis Club strives to meet that mission in several ways through activities with and service to our community, all made possible through our annual Christmas auction and through donations from our awesome and generous community. In the last several years, we've given three scholarships, and this year we were faced with the possibility of only being able to give two. But due to our members' love of this community and their generosity, I'm pleased to say that we have three $1,000 scholarships to present tonight. Applications were submitted by the student and our club subcommittee evaluated their answers. And they chose the recipients tonight based on those answers given and a point system um, that was devised by them. And they feel like they've chosen the very best um, of those that applied. So, I don't have a lot to say except please help me congratulate Charlie Shelton, congratulations Charlie, Kennedy Seifert, Congratulations, Kennedy. And Kelsey Rainey. Okay. 
Thank you very much. All right. Uh, Coach Chapel will now present the Helen Driscoll Memorial Scholarships. The Driscoll House Scholarship is named after Helen Driscoll. She was an RN at the Golden Age Nursing Home for over 30 years. She had a servant's heart as well as love for children. Helen wanted to give back to the Guthrie students choosing health care services as well as helping our children. This year there are 19 recipients, recipients ranging from $500 to $900 scholarships that equals over $15,000. first recipient is Mercy DeMint. These also are renewable scholarships that can be renewed every year. In her third year is Brianna Lejeski. Melanie Pennington. Kennedy Seifert, Charlie Shelton, Vianney Chavez. Drew Dodgen, Lauren Irwin, Trenda Lee Grand, Isabella Lewis. Jose Martinez, <laughs> Megan Matthews, <laughs> Elena Patterson. Kirsten Perrin, Kelsey Rainey, <laughs> Zeb Robbins, who's going into nursing, Ellie Throckmorton. Caden Ward, <laughs> Stephanie Velasco Nito, <laughs> I actually said your name right. <laughs> Thank you, guys. All right, now Mr. Brian Pearson presenting the Scroogefield Nelson Scholarships. Good evening, one and all, and congratulations to you on what you've accomplished. Uh, in the coming weeks, you are the focus of the 
class of 2020, seniors across the country, do you realize that you are among a group that is creating history? Because you survived this year, and you need to be applauded for that. But remember, you may be the one who's receiving the, the diploma, but you have a support system that is deep. The Guthrie administration, the staff, the teachers here, the faculty, and your parents, your grandparents, your friends, your family, your support system. You didn't make it here by yourself. So do not forget them, and you need to applaud the folks in the stands right now. But tonight it's about you. Um, I'm here to present a scholarship uh, to three young men and women uh, who have been recognized, and I want to thank Dr. Simpson and Mr. Legrand because the three of us are the selection committee. But the gentleman that created this was a Guthrie High School graduate. His family came in the run of 1889, and the roughly 160 acres that is kind of bordered by Pine Street and north of uh, College Avenue on the east of town uh, it is the Scrutchfield Nelson Farm, basically. And it was honored in the uh, anniversary of our statehood a couple years ago. Charles, after graduation, went into the United States Air Force. And upon his graduation there, uh, when he was discharged, came back to Guthrie for a period of time. But he was a lifelong educator from that time on. He wasn't a teacher. He was always working in administration. He was the dean of men for what is now the University of Texas at Arlington. And after about a 25-year stint there, he came back to Guthrie and started working with the Guthrie Job Corps and was the registrar out there for about 12 years and continued in volunteer capacity after that. Upon his death, he left 75% of his estate to a scholarship fund that was to award these three scholarships. Uh, the requirements were that the student had to graduate from Guthrie High School during this current year, that they had to attend the University of Oklahoma, Oklahoma State University, or the University of Central Oklahoma. His association there uh, was a result of when he came back to Guthrie, he started training people how to be a wait staff, waiters and waitresses. And many in the crowd may remember the Sand Plum restaurant that used to be downtown in Guthrie. Charles was the gentleman who was responsible for that wait staff. So it's my pleasure on behalf of his family uh, and the trust that he left to name these three individuals. And if you'd come forward, Ms. Madison Dean, Mr. Hudson Harden, and Ms. Stephanie Velasco Nito. Congratulations, you guys. Now Ms. Chad will present the remaining academic scholarships. I'm going to try to do this without crying. And I, I'm a crier, so I hope I can get through this. This year's seniors... Um, I look out and I can say a story on every single one of them. And on March 13th, when we left, that Thursday and then Friday, some of them came back, you would have never dreamed I would not see them until tonight. And so my daughter was her first year teaching, and I said, Abby, you will get to see your kids next year. I won't get to see some of these kids ever again if they don't come to graduation. So that breaks my heart because as a counselor, I get to hear all these stories uh, of where they want to go or what they want to do and I get to be just a little bit a part of that and so for this year's seniors they will always hold that special place in my heart that I miss nine weeks of their life and I can't wait to watch where they all go and what they do um, I look out here and I'm really disappointed that OSU, OU, Southwestern, Rose State, 
some of these colleges are not here to present that big money scholarships that they're going to give out. And I can promise you parents and people out there, there's a lot of money right here in this room tonight. A lot. And we have girls that have gotten regent scholarships, that have got full ride scholarships. We've got students that have got a lot of academic money out there. And it's just sad for me that they're not going to get to be recognized by different universities. We have a lot going to OSU. We have several going to OU this year. We have girls that are going to Rose State getting four-year commitments out of that. Um, we have girl, students going to Southwestern. Uh, it's just all over that we're having students go. And it's just been my pleasure to be your counselor this year and to help you along that way. But right now what I would like to do is to give this Masonic Student of the Day Award, and it's given by the Masonics. And the Student of the Day Award is based on outstanding scholarship, leadership, citizenship, integrity. And we as a staff voted on that, thank goodness, before the COVID, um, before spring break, and we have a girl and a boy recipient. The girl recipient is Miss Kelsey Rainey. You want to go down? And the boy recipient for the Student of the Day Award is Mr. Bo Robbins. Now, the Guthrie Lodge also gives away scholarships. And the lodge members sent me the certificates, and I think they've already sent the students their awards today. Um, but this year, Hudson Hardin will receive the William Dodd Masonic Scholarship for $1,000. Robert Paddock will also receive the William H. Dodd Masonic Scholarship for $1,000. Connor Blackburn will receive the Dr. James T. Chesner Scholarship for $1,000. And Elena Patterson will also receive the Dr. James T. Chesner Scholarship for $1,000. The next few scholarships are given away through the Education Foundation that has set up. The first one is the Joe and Velma Eubank Scholarship, and it's um, through the Oklahoma Baptist Foundation. This scholarship ranges depending on how much the market does, and this year at the time when they sent the check, it was pretty high. It was $1,500. These scholarships are voted on. They fill out applications, and we have a voting um, committee at school that meets, and we discuss those. This year it was done by a Google form because we couldn't meet. But this year's recipient of the $1,500 scholarship to the Joe E. and Velma Eubanks Memorial Scholarship is Kelsey Rainey. The next scholarship is the Lisa Scholarship. It's a scholarship set up by um, the Haney family, and it is a four-year scholarship, a thousand dollars semester. It's through the Oklahoma, the Guthrie Educational Foundation. You have to attend OSU, OU, or UCO to apply for this scholarship. And this year's recipient of the Lisa Scholarship is Johnny Scroggins. And the Aline Memorial Scholarship, it is also set up by a family here in town. And it is a $1,000 scholarship, and it goes to Elena Patterson. And I don't even know who these names are. This is the Guthrie Noon Lions Club Scholarship. And it is for $1,000, and it's given away by the Guthrie Lions Club. And I just want to take a moment just to thank the Guthrie New Lions Club. 
they have a, they present, I get to bring two students each month, Lions Club Student of the Month, each month, and it's just really fun to take the kids down there and ride down there with them and get to know them, and the Lions Club, if you've ever been to a Lions Club meeting, it's pretty funny, and it's a lot of fun, and they love when the students come. And so this year, they're going to give away two scholarships for $1,000 each, and the first recipient is Trevor Sleep. And the second $1,000 scholarship goes to Connor Blackburn. And my closing remarks to you all seniors, if you have not sent me a request by email of where you want your final transcript to be sent, please do, please do so tonight on your way home. Get on your phone, send me an email. Ms. Chad, please send my transcript to... OSU, OU, Southwestern, somewhere. Because what's going to happen is they're going to let you go at start school in August. But then when you go to enroll for the second semester in about October, there's going to be a hold on your account because you don't have a final transcript. And you're going to be calling me going, Ms. Chad, you didn't send my transcript. Did you send me a request? I can't send it unless you send me that request. So everybody make sure that you send that request out. Okay? And if you have not paid for your AP test, please do so. That's all I have to say, and good luck, and you guys know I love you all very much. Well, I'd be remiss tonight if I didn't uh, give some uh, compliments and congratulations to you guys, but at the same time, uh, I want to say a special thank you to Chris Evans and Guthrie Newspage for streaming this entire ceremony live so you guys have the opportunity to go back and watch this. And this night, uh, this evening's broadcast was sponsored by the Guthrie Ministerial Alliance. And so we certainly appreciate their efforts and uh, their sponsorship of this special evening tonight. And Chris Evans and his staff for taking the time to stream this for us. We're very appreciative of that. And we're also very appreciative of our community. And just like Mr. Ms. Uh, Chad and, and Dr. Simpson alluded to, we have a, an extremely supportive community here in Guthrie, Oklahoma. And they present a lot of money to our students each and every year. And so I am thankful to be a product of this system, an alum of this school, and a uh, product of this community. And I know that uh, these students will certainly benefit from the money that was presented this evening. Again, I always like to close by saying it takes an entire village to raise a child. And as uh, Mr. Kennedy from the Air Force Academy alluded to, your parents are a big part of the reason that you're here this evening. Your guardians, your support staff, uh, they are a, a large part of your success. And I know that they're proud of you. And as, as your principal, I'm extremely proud of you. And as Ms. Chad said, I can't wait to see what you guys do and what you become and where you go from here. And like I always like to say, don't ever forget from where you came. Uh, it's very important because all of your teachers, your parents, uh, your friends, your peers, all had a part of you becoming of who you are today. And never forget that because those people were very instrumental in your lives and shaping you. And we can't wait to see what the future holds. And and the great things that you're going to do and you're going to accomplish. This was a, an extremely uh, accomplished graduating class. I mean, you can see from the number of valedictorians we had this year and these scholarships that were given. And so we're proud of each and every one of you. Um, stay tuned for graduation uh, information. Uh, we've set that plan out. And depending on the guidelines uh, in June, and then uh, if uh, we have no restrictions, we'll have it in June. If so, we'll have it in uh, if there are restrictions still in place uh, prior to June 26th, then we'll have it in July. But uh, as soon as we have that information and we make that decision, we'll get that information out to you so that you can make adequate plans. But again, thank you so much for coming tonight. We appreciate it, and uh, best of luck in the future. Hey there, Class of 2020. I am Ronnie Fields, the president of Guthrie Ministerial Alliance, and on behalf of all of the churches of Guthrie, we want to congratulate you on your graduation. 
and we are excited for whatever God has in store for you in the next chapter of your life. And we wish you all many blessings on whatever the future holds. So good luck to you, class of 2020.